Okay, I'm gonna try to demonstrate and explain um, a feature in Symbolic Web which I'm called uh, History Support or HTML5 History Support. Um, it's basically uh, it's basically a different way of looking at uh, mapping uh, URL data to web application state and and history HTML5 history at the same time, <coughs> which I think is pretty unique. <coughs> Uh, I mean, I'll just jump right into the, into this. I think. Uh, okay, so the source code is over here. This creates a new viewport in the symbolic web. Viewports are tabs, uh, browser tabs, browser windows, and uh, yeah, you can think of it like uh, an application is the web app. A session is one user. And within a session, there's multiple viewports, which can, as I said, be either tabs or or um, browser windows in the same browser. That is so. Yeah, it's it's uh, organized like that. So this function um, is called and uh, sets up the viewport for the user. So and it runs here at the moment. So that is to say. Uh, here actually so when I press enter here it'll already map uh, some state when I press enter just watch now I press enter now and you can see it adds a and B to the URL uh, instantly so it maps state in two directions both from the browser to the server and the other way around when needed it, it map from a uh, server to the client or browser um, okay so yeah and the reason it maps two and three in this this case is because two and three are the default values for these models so I use the word model since um, yeah this is basically a model view or MVC type thing with some reactive programming support in the mix here so this web app just sums two numbers three and two is five very simple and uh, you can see the setup here it is uh, the a model is a value model vm containing three as a default value and the b input model and uh, yeah, so that's the input model actually and, and the a model mm, Yeah, yeah, it, it's it does some indirection here via uh, second model because it needs to actually parse text input into uh, numbers correctly. Let's see here. So, and the sum model is just uh, it sets up an observer context with observe value models and. Um, yeah, this will observe these two models, A and B model, and the sum of these. So maybe I can just test it in the REPL here first. I can just demo it here, just to make sure it work, works. I'm sorry, so if I change this to 5, 5 and 2, I'll just tab out, uh, and you'll see 5, 2, 7. Uh, and you'll instantly see that the, the URL has also changed, changed, but the page has not reloaded. This is important. Um, and uh, a history entry has been added, so I can go back, and you'll see it changed to three, which was the previous. And the sum changes automatically. This is done um, via the reactive support in Symbolic Web, and I can go forward again. Of course. I, a user can copy 
this URL and paste it in a forum or wherever. And uh, as the user then, uh, second user then loads the page with a different value here, or maybe a different value here, the, the, the sync, uh, which by default happens from server to client when there's no nothing in the URL for A and B is uh, skipped and it'll sync the other way from the client to the server and uh, some will the sum model will uh, of course uh, detect this so it's a press enter now it will do the right thing and I can keep changing this and yes and this stuff works in uh, most of the browsers I've tested uh, older Internet Explorer browser it'll just uh, I mean in browsers without support for HTML5 history it'll simply uh, reload the page every time um, there is a change in order to add history entries this is of course less than optimal I could uh, say um, use a hash thing here I think that's pretty common but this creates a lot of other problems which I, I don't see the point in dealing with that with, uh, with that anymore in, in a very nice way because the percentage of users still using who are still using these old browsers is pretty low these days so yeah it doesn't make sense uh, Anyway, that, 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 that's a different issue or topic. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure. Uh, what, hmm. Yeah, so this is you can view uh, this part as just a setup. This is the views, the models, and uh, the views um, all in one. And um, of course, these, you don't want every model and view, etc., to be mapped to the URL. I mean, every view and model in your app um, to be mapped by default because there's a lot of models and a lot of things going on. So you have to be explicit about what you want uh, mapped to the uh, URL here. And this is done via these, thing, these things. Here. Uh, value model sync from URL it says here but uh, uh, if I, if I ch check out the doc string here um, it says if context widget is given vm sync to URL is also called with the same data, data as uh, arguments so um, f this uh, sync from URL is really a two-way sync so it will sync uh, from the URL and to the URL from I mean from server to client and client to server, but it does so in a hopefully intelligent way, as I just showed. Okay, I, I, I could I guess I'm not sure if I'm going to explain uh, this root widget stuff and uh, the append here to a root widget. I mean root widget is just a blank. Uh, mapped to a blank HTML element on the page. I guess you can figure out which one is pretty. You can see here it's, it's actually the body <laughs> because body has an ID with underscore body. Uh, so, and it'll, it'll call uh, this is short for jQuery append. So it'll append. Uh, this one, which, which is just a uh, HTML contain, container with HTML container there. So it'll, it'll add this to the root widgets. Uh, and this is basically a hiccup. Uh, the closure uh, H, uh, HTML generation library. With some, uh, and the SV function, yeah. It'll it'll uh, generate the correct HTML for uh, our views here. So those are 
Yeah, and you can see A view and B view. These are just text inputs. Yeah, and uh, they they um, they are tr synced via on change DOM events and uh, the sum view over here is just just a basic span holding the sum model. So th that that's the that's the top of our page uh, over here. You're seeing very simple. Um, and yeah, this is just a, a little thing to. I mean, yeah, to show that the page do, page doesn't reload. I mean, if I reload the page, uh, the the number here will uh, change since this is a call to rand int. You can see it if I reload now. Yeah, so uh, the number changes on reloads, but there's no reloads when I change here and when you see that you are changed so the, okay and um yeah and uh, okay so this uh, that's it basically i can uh, and this uh, this is just a simple i could actually uh, make this code shorter by uh, but i won't do that now so uh, the link function here is it's pretty interesting, I guess. It, this allows me to, if, if I start by two and three, it doesn't make the number simpler. I can uh, increment A. But this will actually increment the model on the server end. But since the sync goes both ways, it'll also s s update the clients. And it'll add to history so I can move forward and backward in history. Nine, eight. 9, 10, 11. Yes, pretty nifty. Uh, this, it does this uh, um, yeah I mean the, not, not everything here is very <laughs> very documented but it basically uh, it's basically uh, the UR, uh, URL mapper, which I created up here. It's the first argument, and it um, yeah, it takes the existing value of a model, creates a new model, and increments the value. Of that model VM sync is uh, is uh, I can maybe control some here so value models uh, like this as a value model I can create a copy of uh, this is X and I can create a X copy or sync so uh, VM sync X then um, both all these will contain the same value uh, and I need of course I need some more arguments that may sync the colors have changed in the recent closure mode here so I don't have any trouble lifetime infinite and callback will just have old value new value we don't care new mm. yeah we take the new value of x and just increment new value so the x synced will always be w w one more than x so x is two and we sync x synced is three and we can verify that by uh, let's just add some output print a bit and we can uh, vm alter this is just the same as the closure alter but it handles uh, it does it with value models let's print it out again yeah as you can see it works there's also vm set this is not very functional. 
this is this is uh, I guess if I were to use um, pure functional programming I'd use um, functional reactive hmm. I've forgotten the term yes this one FRP but it doesn't seem very I mean the ID doesn't seem very stable and I haven't had time to explore it yet and make my own conclusion so I I, I took the classic approach because it works even though it has some problems and the way I deal with it is by basically this is STM via dual sync uh, and um, yeah, when I touch the database uh, it'll use uh, something called uh, two-phase two -phase commit protocol to synchronize the memory transaction and the database transaction transaction so this works even though it's not a pure functional approach to these things now I forgot why I were to demonstrate this but uh, let's go back here yeah yeah I'm just trying to explain what this does it just take the a model uh, the existing value and increments it I mean this is what it does increment a so yeah it's just got direct code for that and that's about it the last line is just the source code of course which is this is open source uh, it's not a very friendly license for now um, I'm not uh, I don't think this is ready for the public yet so it's not documented it's not stable I don't see it being stable in quite some time so I mean in order to save myself and other people some pain I, I just made it a pretty uh, aggressive license it is the AGPL v3 license which is open source but people can't can really use this in in i mean closed source project if you want to write a, some um, i'm ranting here this this is off topic but yeah anyway i think i'll stop there i just felt i should uh, demonstrate some of the ideas there I, I think this is interesting I mean this, this is a silly toy of course but I'm also using this to um, for more traditional mapping of navigation and stuff I mean look at this web page this is running uh, on symbolic web and you can see a category here which is this thing books now the category changed it's just using the same thing to basically map instead of mapping data to the URL you're mapping sort of pages or sections to the URL same here this is a section this is a front page it's called advertisers but then I click here it's just a HTML5 history again now it's a section cashbacks notice how the the category disappeared from the URL now because this is handled by the lifetime support in symbolic web because uh, um, uh, the lifetime of our URL mapper is handled via widgets or viewport so if our widgets go out of uh, out of view or is not visible anymore there's no point in showing the the, the model uh, mapping the model to the url anymore as if i go back the widgets will be added back to the 
viewport and it will be visible but and of course it might have a default value but in the history the client will override that value so we'll end up at the at the um, previous uh, category in this case and I can go back again uh, the page is a bit jumpy I'm not, I'm not sure if I, I mean when I click here it'll actually jump down and show the top results like this and I had to scroll up again to see where I was I did this because if I didn't make the page jump like this people will not notice that uh, clicking on these things had any effect because the page didn't reload kind of ironic because I mean it's a I mean, it's too fast, actually. <laughs> it's just kind of strange. Uh, people are used to f the page uh, turning white for a uh, half a second and uh, loading again. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind of strange. So, so I, I kind of decided to, to stick with this because at least people notice that something happens here when I click something. So, yeah. And I can click on uh, each and one of these things, and uh, the section the section will change from advertisers to advertiser, and uh, this one will be added to show which one. Uh, anyway, all this is handled with the same system as shown here, and uh, so so you can use it for navigation and sections on page two on say, pages two, not not just. Uh, I mean, strange corner cases like this, even though it's pretty interesting. You can imagine a form here with some names and maybe other data, and you can map it to the URL so you can share it with other people and they will get a pre filled in form loaded um, um, as people share. Of course, you, you should map. Uh, private information to the URL in case people are stupid and and, and share share the URL with with uh, private information but uh, yeah it's 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 pretty interesting I think yeah. and uh, yeah by default it won't map anything so you have to, so you have to be explicit as, as I said here you you have to be explicit about what's synced to the URL Anyway, that's it for now. I think I'll turn this thing off uh, uh, and uh, see how this recording went and uh, talk to you later. Okay, bye.